14 hours. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> you, you do reach a point when you get towards the end of a battle when everybody's mechs are all torn up and you know shit's about to start blowing up, but sometimes they just won't die. <laughs> it's just like, come on. You have the one weapon that you know if you land a hit anywhere you hit, it's going to it's going to probably take him out and you miss. And it's just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, um, hey Henry, how's your sound? Thermo. I can hear everyone. Can you hear Hello? me? Yep, you're good. Yep. Is my uh, is my mic too loud? No. no. Too soft. No. I don't okay. think so. Sounds like you're in a little bit of a tunnel, but it's fine. That's the noise canceling stuff. Ah. Uh, gotcha. Wouldn't it be funny if he was actually in a tunnel? <laughs> I don't ask questions anymore. <laughs> um. So, uh, just so you guys know, we touched on it last time, but um. The alien itch is really starting to get bad. <laughs> um, so it, it's only a matter of time before I got to run alien. Um, just keep that in the backs of your heads. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 coming, guys. Get right. ready for it. Yeah, well, uh, Romulus, I think, streams mid-month. Something like that. I look forward to watching it again. I've got I know several people that saw it a couple times in the theaters, and it's just like, yeah, I'm not willing to spend that kind of money. Um, yeah, no kidding. But I'm glad I saw it in theaters. I thought it was great. So cool. Um, it, it, yeah, I was I was logged into Destroyer of Worlds on Roll Twenty this morning, looking over the interface. It's a little. It's a couple things a little goofy. I gotta figure out how to work, but no big deal. Um, and we and we will definitely need to track down probably at least one more player for that, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Anyway, um, so the team, uh, welcome back, to Acton oh. Cthulhu. Uh, completely different Yay. type of yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was much rejoicing. Um, I, I uh, I've changed our uh, I've changed our background here. Um, just wanted to change up the art. Art doesn't necessarily match the adventure. I just thought it was cool. <laughs> Obviously, you're in Egypt, and the, in my recollection from all the movies I've seen, Egypt doesn't look like this. <laughs> so, let me pull up my PDF. Um, and I apologize, my uh, I've got a little bit of a headache this morning, so if I uh, if I start buffering, <laughs> just bear with me. I'll pull it together. <laughs> so, you. Uh, your team, you guys uh, uh, pile in. Uh, uh, you pile in an, an aircraft. Uh, end up flying from England to France and then across the Mediterranean, uh, where you land on a dirt airfield outside of Cairo. Cairo is hot, dusty, and extremely busy when you arrive. A scene unchanged in millennia people pillow um, people mill around and someone always seems to be yelling donkeys and camels clash with cars and the whole city seems to be one gigantic traffic jam according to the notes that you'd been provided by uh oh what was what was the major's name was it strang let's take a look here i believe it was strang Uh, but according to the notes that he has provided you, German archaeologists of the DOG uncovered the Black Stone back before the Great War, and it is believed to be held in the archives of the Cairo Museum of Antiquities. Uh, 
it is believed from what uh, from what section M has researched and from what you also found as the Blackstone lists in roundabout ways the locations of the five civilizations uh, and therefore the pieces of the weapon that you're looking for. Um, there was also a note and this was of interest uh, in the in the journal of the Nazi archaeologists that you guys were covered. There was a note about a retired British Army engineer, uh, Major Blythe Manders, <laughs> and uh, and that's that was a a point of interest for obvious reasons that a retired British Army engineer and an officer is listed in the. Uh, uh, and it was it was just listed as a footnote, nothing um, nothing specific. Um, there's also an interesting note from Section M that this strange reverse spiral image seems to be doodled in several places throughout um, uh, throughout the uh, Nazi archaeologist's journal. Not sure if it's just a doodle or if it actually means something hmm so our our mission here is to get this stone out of the uh, museum is that well you what you're what you're looking for is you're looking your mission is to locate the other pieces of the weapon you okay. found the one right. in Rome um, so, and based on the information that you guys have been able to glean and Section M gleaned from the journal, it's believed one of them is here uh, uh, somewhere in, e in Egypt, somewhere in the Cairo or, or near Cairo. Okay. It is likely the stone is a clue. I see. I don't know if we necessarily want to try and cause an international incident by stealing it, but we sure <laughs> but, want to know. look at it. We yeah, sure want to look at it. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Um, all right. What was the guy's name? Major Sloan? Is that what you said? Major Blythe Manders. Oh, well, uh, there's oh. that major, but the guy who sent us on the mission. Oh, um, Strang. Strang. Okay. Yeah, he's your he's your head handler up at uh, Section M. Okay. All right. So Blythe, his last name, like, is. Landers or Manders? Manders with an M. M. Okay. So he provides us a bunch of this documentation, these notes, and sort of like clues, I guess, about the research they've done. Is that correct? Where all this is coming from? Okay. Correct. From the infamous notebook. Oh, uh, all of this came from the notebook that we recovered, the one from. Uh, yeah, the one Baker, uh, Baker. grabbed on his Perloined. way out. Yeah, Perloined. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd say borrowed, but you have no intention of giving it back. I mean, you betcha. partially because you killed the guy, so there's that. <laughs> he had it coming. Okay. All Nazis have it coming. There you go. <clears throat> so, here, here. To, uh, to, to understand our setting... We're in Egypt in 1939, so Italy is in Ethiopia, Correct. but not in Egypt. Correct. Um, Say invaded in and, 40. And um, historically, uh, the Egyptians spoke a hodgepodge of languages, I think. They, obviously, they spoke some Arabic and... Correct. There's a um, there's a strong there are strong spheres of influence here from both um, British and the French. Um, right. There's a lot of people here who speak English. There's a lot of people here who speak French. There's a lot of people who speak Arabic. More importantly, there's a lot of people that, like you said, speak a hodgepodge of all three. Are we on a military craft or is this kind of incognito? No, it's a civilian civilian plane. Okay. All right. An Electra, quite specifically. All right. Uh, Slim, Slim, like, wakes up from a nap uh, while the plane's landing. 
pulls the hat up from his eyes. Looks around, rubs his uh, his eyes. He's, Man, I I slept like a rock. I, I feel like I haven't seen you three in months. <laughs> and uh, and he's like <laughs> he's like looking out the window, and he's like, "Oh, I like this. This looks just like home." <laughs> They have a, a lot of camels there, do they? <laughs> uh, I have a funny story about that, but anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> Apparently, there was a Texas Rangers unit in, in West Texas on camels. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I read about that. So, um, all right. We uh, we need to, I guess, first order of business, we probably need to set up shop, right? Find a, a safe house or, or uh Something yeah, you up. have um you have accommodations waiting for you. I'm sorry. At okay. uh uh oh what is this place called? Um it's called the Star of Nazar. Okay. It's a uh it's a it is a reasonably basic hotel um that the that British intelligence uses quite a bit. Right there in Cairo. Are we, um, is this sort of a here's keys to a room situation or is there a contact? Uh, you're, you're, it'll be waiting for you when you, when you check in. Okay. Let's find transportation and get our gear, get going. Yep, yep. Okay. So, um, Slim, you have, you have your, you have your big bag. Never leave home without it. Your big bag of tricks. <laughs> we don't have to go through customs now, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, yeah, Slim's got all his gear. Although, um, did we were we able to requisition any replacements of, uh, you know, for instance, uh, I am down one rocket. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any sort of requisition uh rules there or? yeah we'll actually get there in a minute okay all right all right so in that case um i guess let's uh let's take a cab to uh the star of nasser all right uh, i'm not sure where the airport is uh in cairo but i'm guessing it's not in the middle of town yeah probably not um it which is interesting because on my gm's map um, they actually don't provide that, which is really bizarre, but the, uh, uh, let me shrink this here a little bit. I, and again, what time of day did you say this was? Oh, you, you arrived pretty close to noon. Okay. Um, again, I'm really, one thing I'm really aggravated about was that they, they provide me this beautiful, well-detailed map and yet I can't show it to you guys because it's, uh, you know, obviously it's got certain things on it. And I don't understand why there's not a player map. Um, anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, well, not only that, if you go to the effort, say you go to the effort of turning it into a PDF and then going in and scrubbing the shit off. <laughs> You can tell sucks been scrubbed. So. Yeah, you know something's there. <laughs> Start giving you clues. <laughs> okay so the uh where you guys would have flown into is an area just to the northeast uh of the city where it starts to thin out a little bit um and the star of nazar is not far away from that it's uh uh it's in the northern part of the city so it's only just uh where's the scale on this thing it's only a few kilometers from the um from the uh, from the airstrip, from the landing strip, so it's not far to make it to uh, to the hotel. Uh, you're, uh, uh, you you want to uh, call a taxi, so I, I I think it's a probably an old busted car of Italian or maybe even Czechoslovakian make, um, you know, a Skoda or uh, something along those lines, uh, with a with a an Arabic driver who uh, greets you in in enough English that you understand uh, what he's asking for and how much it's going to cost when he takes you, and the the whole way is a is a 
you're you're fairly convinced that you're in a high speed chase uh, the entire way because he he seems to floor it as he whips around uh, uh, men on horses and then slam on his brakes as he comes up behind a you know a a, a, wa- a camel drawn wagon that's uh, in the way the whole while he's uh, screaming obscenities in a variety of languages out his window. Um, <laughs> Uh, you you're you're you you grow motion sick and you're convinced that you're this is where you're going to die um <laughs> not by snake people or nazi bullets uh when he finally uh uh slams his brakes and the car skids to a halt amidst a bunch of dust on a on a dirt road outside a rather spartan and unimpressive looking uh stone building with stucco on the front God damn, friend, you can drive. And he, like, slaps him on the shoulder. Uh, appreciate the ride. And uh, slips him. What, what kind of currency do they uh, use in Egypt? Oh, what is the currency of Egypt? That is an interesting question. I mean, I don't need to need to know. I just assume we... Well, now, for... Um, well, currently, it's the Egyptian pound. Oh. Uh. Um, the Egyptian pound is the official currency of Egypt. It is, okay, it is divided into 100, I'm hoping I pronounced this right, piastres. Hmm. Um, and it looks like it's been in use for quite some time. When did it, okay. uh, let's see here. Date of introduction, 1834. Okay. Well, there you have it. Wow. All right. So he's, uh, you know, he's like rifling through like this manila envelope of foreign currency. Provided. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, sort of like confused, but uh, pays the guy probably a little too much or too little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gets out. And when he pulls this giant duffel bag, like the, like the shocks of the car, like, like the car, whole car rises up like <laughs> four inches. <laughs> 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 He uh, and, uh, he uh, he thanks you heartily and 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 tells you that you know if you if you ever need transportation just call for Abdul Abdul Al Hazred. <laughs> <Holy shit. laughs> yeah, we'll be calling that yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> How do we call you again by tracing a circle on the ground yeah. and then what? Are there cool. Instructions, please. It's... Polik, Polik, you just found his new friend. That's very funny. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I uh, quickly yeah. found a uh, map of Cairo from 1933. If you guys, I emailed it to you guys, and if you if we want to use it or not. Yeah, sure. I found I found one from the War Department in 1940. No, oh, there you go. It's even closer. But I dare you to pronounce some of these. Oh streets. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me open it. Oh my God! Um, yeah, let me let me get my bearings on this thing. This is crazy. It is crazy. Um, let me. I got to compare it to what I've got versus. So that is. All right. So where on this is? Oh, this is a good one. There's Gazira Island. Leave it to the archaeologist to hook us up on that. <laughs> There's Gazira the Island. The the British Embassy is somewhere around there, of course. Oh, God. This is There's brutal. a YMCA. There's the There's British residency. Right there, there is. Look right underneath the golf course on that island. <laughs> right under El Gazira. <laughs> yeah, right oh, yeah, I see it. No shit. I guess they didn't mind Catholics in Easter Pass. Um... So yeah, okay. This is uh, wow. This is complex. Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> there or there, there. Slim's got a cigarette dangling out of his mouth, holding this giant duffel bag. Uh, this sort of like rumpled suit. He takes a drag from behind some sunglasses, and he's, he like takes a deep breath in. He's like, "Smell that desert air, gentlemen." <laughs> Places. Paradise. And he like looks out over like a <laughs> desolate, uh, colorless 
uh, sequence of shacks <laughs> on land with like one coconut tree. Yeah. Did you say we're on Ogre Kazira Island? Or... No, I was just using it as a point of reference. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, you guys are. Let's see here. I'll tell you exactly where. I'm going to try to tell you exactly where you're at, if that makes sense. Um, I just need to match these two maps up. If you're looking at... <clears throat> that's got to be that right there. Avenue de la... Yeah, that's it right there. So, if you guys look... Um, if you guys look at that um, that map that Jim sent... Um, if you're looking at El Gazira Island, there's a spot that says Polo Ground Gazira Sporting Club. Okay. All right. So if you go north of that, if you go north of that, like two squares on the map. Yep. Okay. Then go east, one, two, three, four squares, and you see this area where this, uh, in that square, there's this, there's just this huge intersection. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, Avenue, Avenue de la, Re oh, oh, God, God almighty. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you're saying like uh, right around uh, C7 is the quadrant? Oh, you know what? Hey, look at that. D7, um, specifically D7. You got my battleship. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. So, um, so the hotel that you're in is on the is on the western side of D7. I didn't realize it had uh, it had a. Uh, I, I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize it had that on it. So that's very helpful. So, um, yeah, the uh, the hotel you're in is on the western side of that D7 square. Okay. Yeah, so, there's a bunch of hotels in that uh, square. And Hotel Victoria. so you know um, a little bit of lay of the land, you would be aware of the location of the British end Embassy, which mm -hmm. is in H uh, Hotel 5. Okay. I think Hotel 5. Hotel 5, yep. It's the northwest corner of Hotel 5. Okay, I see. Okay. So we're uptown a little bit. <clears throat> Yeah, but that being said, um, the distance from there to there is, um, it's only a couple of miles. Are we supposed to uh, check in with the British? No, not necessarily. Um, just gotcha. letting you know where it's at. Gotcha. You know, Singy, you're probably going to want a hat with a brim. It's going to get a little uh, sunny down here. Single arch and eyebrow. <laughs> not amused. <laughs> I thought his eyebrows were good enough to give him enough shade. <laughs> that, that and the mustache. Yeah. yeah. Pull his mustache over his eyes. Yeah, that one would have come uh, from frosty India. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Singh has no idea what it is and hot and what, it is, <laughs> uh, what heat is. <laughs> so you said the hotel was in Delta 7? Correct. Okay. Ooh. That's a pretty big-looking avenue there. So, uh, as you guys enter this hotel, it's, uh, walking inside is, uh, quite the reprieve. You know, it, it, it probably, uh, inside it, it, and and everything is very open here to allow breezes to pass through, but it feels like easily a, a fifteen or twenty degree drop moving inside to the the uh, the hotel, which looks to be mostly made of stone, uh, at least on the outside, the uh, including the floors. Though there's cheap but serviceable rugs laid out. There's a there's a reception desk with a with a, a an Egyptian man. Uh, behind it wearing a uh, a uh, basic but clean linen suit. Howdy, partner. How you doing today? He, uh, he raises an eyebrow and responds with a, uh, with a very British accent. Uh, are, 
you sure you're in the right place? <laughs> he looks around. <laughs> says, uh, this here the star of Nazar? He, uh, he, he kind of tilts his head slightly to the left, very guardedly, and says, It is? Do you have well, that's reservations? Yeah, yeah, should be under uh, strain. He uh, he looks down. He starts uh, he starts flipping through a book. Uh, he says, "Ah, I see. From uh, uh, we received the reservation from uh, uh, communicate from the British Embassy. So it says uh, four of you, two rooms." And he kind of looks. And he's, he, uh, he says, what a motley crew the four of you make. <laughs> I'd say uh, you look rather lost, though I can't imagine where the four of you would look at home. <laughs> those, uh, those new diversity initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I almost spit coffee all over my screen. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I had to swallow uh, it really quick. That hurt. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, uh, now, which floor are we on? Uh, he says, uh, uh, second floor, uh, your rooms are 204 and 205. Uh, as requested, they do a join. Uh, also, there was a... Um, there was a parcel delivered in advance of your arrival. We've already delivered it to the room. Excellent. You're most kind. I appreciate that. All right. He hands over a couple keys and uh, asks for one of you to sign a ledger book. Oh, uh, uh, sir, uh, what's your policy on pets? Oh, shoot, I forgot. You guys have the dog. <laughs> Pilecki, uh, Pilecki ha I was about to say this, Pilecki has been doing his, you know, uh, seeing eye dog routine, wearing the dark glasses and uh -huh. letting uh, Luca guide him around. He, uh, he kind of tilts his head to the side, like, you know, so that uh, his head's like, the side of his head is almost parallel with the floor, so that he's looking around <laughs> slim at, uh, at Pilecki. And he says, generally speaking, we don't allow pets here, but I suppose we would need to make an exception in your friend's case. Well, yeah, he is uh, a little bit stunted in the, the sack category. Uh, we appreciate your accommodations. We'll keep it clean. In this category. <laughs> Henry, Henry, Henry steps up and signs the register. John Smith. John Smith. <laughs> um, he uh, he he turns it back around and says, uh, "Well, Mr. Smith and other gentlemen, enjoy your stay, and uh, uh, if you would." Please clean up after the dog. Uh, uh, we would the the hotel staff would be most appreciative. He uh, snaps his fingers and a and a and a uh, probably a kid of about twelve or thirteen years old pushes a um, pushes a cart over and uh, and says, uh, uh, "Saeed will take your luggage up to your rooms." Enjoy your stay. Thank you, sir. Then he uh, tips his hat at Saeed. Uh, um, Saeed, uh, you know, you guys, I, I, you guys load your luggage up on his cart, and he pushes you. Uh, he pushes uh, over across the reception area to what his uh, to an elevator. Um, this thing clanks and creaks as it comes down and stops on your floor. And he pulls a uh, he pulls a wire mesh to the side, pushes the cart in, and uh, and uh, just kind of looks at the four of you. <laughs> How big is this elevator? Uh, it's it's large enough for you all to cram in. Um, Henry asks what floor we're going to. 
Saeed, if you'd be so kind, which floor? Saeed just stares at you. And then he I says something you... you don't understand. <clears throat> Is it in Arabic? Uh, it, it, it sounds like French. All right, well, Henry looks at this elevator with some skepticism, but he figures if it hasn't fallen into the basement, oh, there is no basement probably, but it hasn't fallen and killed someone yet, as far as he knows. So he steps in. <laughs> All right. So they don't say that about you, as far as you know. That's right. What, that's what right. if it's a TPK? We all just die in the elevator. Uh, <laughs> we get to play alien. Yeah, alien that's master. right. <laughs> <laughs> to quote Monty Python, "Bang, start again." Um, the uh, this this elevator squeals and creaks its way uh, slowly up, and you're probably all fairly certain that you were safer in the airplane flying across the Mediterranean <laughs> than you are in this elevator. Um, but with a ding of a bell, it mi finally makes it up to the second floor and Saeed unlatches and pulls the, 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 uh, the, uh, mesh aside and wheels your luggage out. All things considered, this hotel's, I mean, it's actually, you know, it's rather Spartan, but it's clean. Uh, really no complaints there. He leads you to your rooms and, uh, I, which are, you know, just locked with a, they just have a, a regular doorknob with a lock and set into it. Nothing exactly high security. Uh, the rooms inside are very basic. Uh, each one has, uh, uh, a double bed and a couple of chairs and a small table. And again, very clean and serviceable. They do have a door connecting them. Uh, and, and one of them is a, uh, yeah, and one of them is a, is a wooden crate of indeterminate size because we don't know what's in it yet. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'm going to, um, just as a matter of course, I, I, take off my glasses and let uh, Luca off leash and uh, I tell her the command to just to search just to do a uh, perception check in the room for anything fishy okay all right Slim, why don't you why don't you tip the young man very well I should give him uh, a few PS to or whatever you pronounce it. now right. I forget how to do that on here Let's see. It's been a while since we used these. Um, oh wait, I gotta get to her. Yeah, you got a character sheet for Luca. Yeah, yeah. So the the uh, kid takes the uh, the the coins and uh, gives you uh, you know gives you a a uh, I can't remember. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Can't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a it's a an expression of of thanks in Egypt and other and some other Arabic countries where they touch their forehead. I just can't remember what the exact thing is called. Um, like I said, brains buffering a little bit this morning. Yeah, so that'd be uh, inside observation. Um, just in this, yeah, two dice. Yeah, actually, well, I'll smell and taste, but um, smell would be... Uh, yeah, I'd let it apply. Yeah. It is called a salam. Thank you. All right. Um, no, everything seems to be as it should be. Uh, rooms are very... Uh, yeah, the rooms are uh, very clean, straightforward, nothing hidden. Um, she sniffs at the crate for a minute, and... Uh, and uh, <clears throat> wags her tail for just a moment and then kind of sits next to it. Probably smells like explosives and feels really good about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Saeed wheels the cart away and heads back down the hallway towards the elevator. Kyle keeps going in and out for me. Are you guys seeing that? Yeah, it does look like he dropped down, huh? There he is. 
This is the second or third time it's happened. Must be that, uh, that work internet. Oh my god. I, yeah, I just spent five minutes in the hall complaining to my boss. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to game. That's right. <laughs> What's going on here? What, what you have no respect? I'm trying to game. <laughs> So fortunately, we have a T-Mobile hotspot that I fired up for the for the office here. So. Okay, excellent. Listen, uh, you know, desperate times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so if you missed it, Luca did an observation check and uh, didn't find anything except wagged her tail, whatever's inside the crate. Okay, so we get we're in the room. There's yep. a crate. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, the the bellhop just left. Um. Yeah. So that's awesome. where we're at. Nothing fishy in here. All right. Well, someone got a crowbar. Open this son of a gun up. I don't know if somebody does have a crowbar. Do any of you have a crowbar? Nothing in that bag of tricks here. Oh, I have my entrenching tool. There you go. That works for everything. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'd give it to you. All right, remind me to give that uh, that uh, dame a piece of my mind. She scratched this son of a gun up. <laughs> I didn't even get to use it. It's like wrenching this thing open. Yeah, you know, a, a squealing of of metal nails pulling out of wood and uh, uh, wood creaking. You uh, eventually get the lid of this thing pried up and off, and it's full of. Uh, you know, it's full of straw packing material, uh, as well as some indeterminate items that you guys uh, get to decide what they are. Um, Fragile. Yeah, that's right. Must be Italian. Uh, so if you guys have your, uh, oh shoot, what is it? The player's guide, I think, has. Where's my? Where are my PDFs? I'm having issues. Thought I had my thought I had the folder open, but I guess I was wrong. Where is the There it is. So if you're looking in the player's guide, uh, you guys have uh, in the equipment section, you guys have eight points to spend on you know, on various equipment. Eight points. Okay, I'm going to download my... So does it... Um, I'm looking to see... Do they do they assign cost for, for these things in here? I don't really see that. Yeah, why... My... This is very strange. My... Um, I'm having some issues. There it goes. Yeah, I... Is the there maybe a chart that just was small. Is it's basically beyond... sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Is this for above and beyond what's on our character sheets already? Uh correct. <laughs> yeah, we leveled up last time, right? And uh, I was like, I got a new spell. Yeah, this, and... this, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna retcon that a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna knock this down to four. Eight's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to knock this down to four, but it's the restriction rating. Basically, I, every item has a restriction rating, and that tells you what it, what the cost of it is, basically. Yeah. Was it tank eight? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, tank eventually. Okay. I'm well, you know, Glenn, you're the you're the weapons man. It's uh, you know what's good, what's not. What tickles your fancy here? Uh, some, my play. Well, you're breaking up a bit. There. Oh, am I? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, you know, you gargled. Because uh, I'm trying to download the play guide, which I'm going to cancel so that I can re preserve my bandwidth. So yeah, you you've got um, so okay. f four points worth. Um, you know, you guys will have to look at your character sheets and decide what you need. An ammo belt for a normal weapon costs one. Uh, that gives you three reloads. Um, like slim, 
mentioned... Well, wait a minute. Slim, didn't you start with a rocket for the bazooka? Or if you I had to... Rec yeah, sure. if you started with a rocket, then you've got the replacement. You got all your normal stuff back um, between adventures. So. Okay, well, here's here's the, the thing. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's fair. So my with the criminal... Uh, well, I think it's criminal or something... Something background, uh, or not background, but maybe characteristic criminal mindset. Something to that effect gave me two illegally obtained pieces of equipment. Oh. So the rocket wasn't necessarily officially requisitioned. Okay, I got you. So, uh, you know, if that changes the yeah, in the that calculus. case, in that case, I would make you spend a point to get a replacement for every replacement rocket. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but I, I do need a, another ammo belt of, uh, machine gun ammo. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm just out of ammo, basically. Uh, machine gun ammo and a rocket, if, if that's of interest. That would cost two, leaving you guys with two points for other things. And, of course, it doesn't just have to be weaponry. I mean, you can look under the, right. uh, the uh, uh, let's see, what's the other section? Uh, the, the belonging section that has other stuff in it as well. I would rather have the machine gun ammo, I think, than the rocket. So if, if we want to use the, that stuff for other other stuff, I'm fine with that too. Now, Slim, I have a question. Did you have, did you have a handgun? I remember loaning. Was it you? I loaned my handgun to because yours broke or something. Yeah. Was it I you? I gave that beauty back to you. Oh, I know, but what? What about you? Um, because his because his handgun was starting oh. basic <clears throat> equipment, and you guys made it all the way back to England, you know, home base. Oh, it had been just replaced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a bunch of stuff here that might be useful. Um, remind me, what page are we looking on? Well, if you're looking for, like, uh, for weapons, it's like page close to page 100. Um, if you're looking gotcha. for other belongings, it starts on 110. 110. Yeah, I'm there. I'm on. I'm, yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm looking. Okay. So we've got... Uh, I mean, there's we have a demolition two points. kit. Yep. There's a demolition kit, which might be... Well, you have two, maybe cool. three, um, depending. If you don't get Slim a replacement rocket for his bazooka, then you have three points. But if you want him armed oh. to the teeth, then you have two. All it right. sure came in handy last time. You guys hear me okay? Yeah, gotcha. Awesome. Back on the main connection here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, just to answer your question quick, I do have my own handgun. I did give the six shooter back to you at one point. Yo, no, I understand. I have it. Oh, okay. I was just, I was just wondering about yours, but Hachi cleared that up by Hachi Man cleared that up by telling us that uh, you got get a replacement because you started with it. Really, the only thing that uh, that I'd like is another ammo belt for the machine gun. Um, oh, anything beyond that is uh, is icing on the cake no you saved us that, that last time that, that machine gun rocks okay um more machine gun please <laughs> what about uh what about you guys do you see anything you, what's our restriction i guess we would have two now yeah we have two yeah so, so we can we can we can get find anything in the box that is uh, two or less. Correct. All right. <clears throat> well, let's see. Anybody need a grenade? Let's see. Um, yeah. What now? What? What? What was that, Baker? What? Yeah, <laughs> grenade. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna lobby for Let me see. Let me see. That pushes you out. Of Run with your straw <laughs> spraying around on the bed. What, now, what's in here? So I don't know about demolition kit. It comes with three three ammo for use. 
So I guess you could use it three times for breaching doors, walls. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it's just like a, a small kit, not like something that'll take a bridge out. But yeah, no, it, it's um, yeah, a demolition kit. Breaching. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or traps. I don't know. That that might that sounds fun. It can or, also well, be. Uh, with... It can also be used in reverse. It can be used to defuse explosives as well. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, so I don't know. That that's my vote. I think that probably could be useful or a demolition kit. Mm-hmm. I mean, grenades are good. I think you get three grenades when you buy them. Uh, uh, no, grenades are a munition. So when you buy a grenade, it's just one. Oh, so you just get one grenade for the yeah. two. This one you get uh, three for the two. Um, I don't know. That's just uh, I'm just throwing it uh, out I'm there. Looking at so demolition would be um, what skill is that associated with? Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be associated with engineering. Okay, I do it, have it. Um, engineering one with mechanical engineering focus. And if you if you want to use it, engineering is the skill. What would be the attribute? Usually reason. Ooh, yeah, you don't want me using it. Yeah, I've got a reason as ten. I do have one in engineering, but I don't have any focuses. And it, it would be combat or explosives. There's an explosive focus, so it must be it would either be that or combat engineering. I oh think. yeah, if there's an explosive focus, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I don't think any of us have an explosive focus, but I got a ten and a one uh, for that. Kyle, you have what? Oh, I had to reconnect. I think. Kyle, you there? So oh, sorry, guys. That's okay. Uh, what did you have in uh, in reason, Kyle? Slim. Uh, in reason. Yeah. Uh, mm, it's not great. Okay. Uh, I want to say so. I've got seven reason. One in engineering with mechanical engineering focus. Okay. I mean, it would make sense for my uh, my character because uh, background is covert operative. Um, you know, being part of the yeah, well, system, shut up. totally. I just don't your, have the focus. Your reason in engineering scores is, is uh, pretty good compared to the rest of us. Yeah. So I mean, if you guys did want the demo, then I could I could probably pull it off. Um, but if there's something else that you think might be better, go for it too. Um, well, let's take a look. Dun, dun, dun. They don't have claymores back in this day. Too bad. Hmm. Oh, there's a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see where it's, how, what the cost is. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's five. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Oh, uh, mortars. Oh, we got to get more. More points next time. All kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so we've used one for the ammo belt. One for or how much for the explosives? Those are two. Two. All right, so we got one left. Well, I think they wanted to replace your bazooka round. I think that's oh. a good idea. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, things are going to get easier. That? Oh, I completely agree. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to monopolize the equipment, so. Uh, All right, so uh, I have everything I need, more or less, you know. So you don't need to worry about me. Okay. Well, thank you. Excellent. All right. All right, so you gentlemen unpack your crate, and I guess the question becomes then, what's the next step? Well, I guess uh, right now our main clue is that, oh, we still have the figurine that points, right? Uh, you do. We still have that guy? You do. So, um, so we got that, and then I guess we should... Uh, 
What was the name of the museum where there's supposed to be a, this tablet? The, um, it's the, uh, it's the, um, the Egyptian Antiquities Museum. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we should go there. Field trip. All right. Check out the local flavor. With the local flavor comes the local smells. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, what do you think, guys? What else are we going to do? Stand yeah. around, look at each other? Yeah. It's, it's uh, afternoon, right? Like one or two o'clock by now. So. And there's no jet lag to speak of. No. Let's hit it. So the... Um, jet lag. Not even a term then. Sorry. <laughs> no. Definitely not. Uh, Travel fatigue. The That's right. The Egyptian Museum is shockingly easy for you guys to get to from your current location because you're in D7 on that map. Uh, the Egyptian Museum is in F5. Um, you'll be able to see it there on that map. And it actually, there's that, that huge road, the Avenue, Avenue de la Riana Nat Nasli, um, which I am assuming means, uh, road of the or road to the river nile something along those lines um basically that just that wide avenue that wide road just goes straight there so it's pretty oh, cool. easy for you guys to reach um let me uh flip to the right page here we're going to the museum first thing correct <clears throat> yep we're taking the little uh stone guy is he pointing in that direction um the yeah, the stone guy is pointing straight up. Oh, yeah. Remember the stone guy point the the stone guy pointed at a piece of the weapon. He doesn't point at the he didn't won't necessarily point at the tablet. I don't know. We'll see. But at any rate, it it was it was rather strange because on the on the flight over, I would note that it seemed to be uh it was pointing <laughs> put it to you this way it was pointing back the way you came as you were flying over until you reached a certain point where it then swiveled and was pointing towards your destination towards egypt uh but once you've made it to cairo it uh it, its arm seems to have moved so that it's pointing straight up in the air which is rather strange Essential, uh, uh, essential, especially since you guys kind of came to the conclusion that it's some form of, um, you think it's a form of compass. Yeah. So. I guess we're going to the moon, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we might. Um, so you said, all right, so we're going to the, we're going to the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities, eh? Yeah. We could we could stroll. Yeah, it's not far. All yeah. right. Cool. I think uh, I'll leave Luca here, um, just to uh, avoid any any complications with. Uh, I don't remember this time period how dogs are looked at in this area. A dog makes a fine meal. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. So Luca's. Uh, I'll just tell Luca to to chill and. Uh, um, We'll go out of all right. Water. The uh, yeah. uh, if if you want to maintain your illusion of uh, being blind, then uh, you should let one of us uh, guide you by the elbow a little bit. Sure, sure, and I'm I'm sure that I uh, have a staff I can use for for walking. Okay, all right. So yeah, let's do that as we walk out. All right, all right, let's do it. So the uh, the Egyptian Antiquities Museum. After a stroll on a hot afternoon, uh, a, a mile or two down, it's found uh, down by the river on uh, Sharia Mariette Pasha. 
Uh, it's it's rather imposing. Uh, orange pink stone walls and a massive white uh, porticoed entrance that kind of towers over the people around it. These large mauve flowers with golden uh, centers float uh, on the surface of an ornamental pool that's right in front of the entryway. Uh, kind of a tiny oasis of calm amid the bustle of the city center. center. Now, uh, now, gentlemen, what exactly are we looking for here? I, uh, I overlooked the documentation we pr provided. To, uh, to answer your question, um, the DOG, which was the German um, uh, archaeological arm, basically, uh, up until the Great War, uh, uncovered the Black Stone in Saïs and or Sais, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, and was uh, supposedly and supposedly is in this museum. Ah, uh, okay. So, all right. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Let's. Uh... Let's go in and start looking around. Um, we don't necessarily want people to know what we're looking for, so let's try and find it on our own before we ask for any help. Um, it's a nice day to look around at a, in a museum. So as uh, you enter the museum and there, um, a, it's a... Uh, second let me pull this up here shockingly um shockingly uh unprepared here the um so the uh the as you enter the the portico entrance uh, you you enter a just a a huge grand hallway. Um, I, with uh, a in a in a in a in an in an anti uh, an anti uh, an antechamber. You enter an anti. I'm sorry. Uh, this is where my brain's having trouble. You enter this antechamber uh, that leads down steps into a huge grand hallway. It's it's. Uh, stone floors that you assume to be marble uh, uh, and huge stone columns that line this grand hallway up to arches on a second level. Uh, there are statues everywhere, statues, uh, 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 you know, the typical Egyptian statue. Uh, of course, how much you all know about them, I guess, depends on your academia and whatnot. Um, there, there's a few people here roaming around, just looking. Um, some are clearly tourists. Uh, I, and there is, there's a, a large reception desk in the middle of the grand hall, behind which is is somebody. In, but in general, it looks like you're fairly free to roam, uh, yeah, the museum. Do the, the information desk, would. I mean, this is 1939, so it's not the same as today, but um, would they happen to have maybe some pamphlets or flyers that talk about attractions in the museum? I, I have absolutely no doubt that they do. Um, and there's also, uh, and of course, also around the, the whole place, there are signs in a variety of languages. Uh, those of you who are multilingual, uh, like Singh, who speaks Arabic as well as English, they, they basically all say the same thing, which is, do not touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are signs that, that point to different, down different hallways, through different archways, you know, to that, that. Um, are pointing to different time periods and different dynasties and stuff like that. All right. Well, Henry's going to go up to the information booth desk. Uh, is someone sitting there? Uh, yes, there's a uh, 
there's a, uh, a Caucasian woman sitting behind the desk. Um, and uh, as, as you approach, she looks up and says, uh, Welcome to the Cairo Museum. In English. English. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, how do you do? Uh, good afternoon. Which, and again, because I don't do accents, I should tell you she has a French accent. Oh, okay. Um, we, uh, my friends and I, uh, we heard of the museum and, uh, you know, we have, you know, some limited time uh, on our trip. And so we thought we would um, take a look. And I was wondering if you had some uh, flyers or pamphlets that uh, discussed attractions. Uh, well, some of the more famous pieces that we should concentrate on. She says, why, certainly. And she, she stands up and she reaches uh, uh, to a spot behind the desk that she can't see and starts pulling different materials together. Uh, and she... Uh, beams a dazzling smile at you and says uh, now much of what the museum has is uh, not on display we're in the process of reorganizing and recataloging <laughs> however uh, you will find and she starts handing she starts uh, she starts uh, uh, bringing materials out to you that recommends different sections of the museum for different uh different time periods and different attractions this found in sarna and this found in uh 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 karnath and you know all these all these different things um and uh she says the uh the museum uh she says the museum was recently uh We've recently acquired a new director, and uh, we're in the process of reorganizing. But um, there's uh, there's there's still much to see. This really isn't a place for people who have limited time. There's so much. There's thousands of years of history here to be to be seen before the English steal it all. No, wait, I didn't say that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It does seem to be a rather large building with many pieces, and you said they're not all on display. Uh, you must have a must have a very large staff uh, cataloging and restoring and choosing what's to display. Oh uh, well, unfortunately for that side of it, uh, uh, Monsieur Lucien is uh, is uh, on his own. I, was there a particular time period or piece that you were interested in uh, where I could direct you all right you forced me to go into my notes <laughs> that's not fair because <laughs> I can't I can't remember if we identified I can't remember if we even identified a time period for this thing I don't believe so. I didn't. We didn't. So time frame is not not possible. Um, what are the other guys doing? Because the other guys have like Singh has a good score in academia, right? Uh, I actually I've got a really good one too. I got a uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out I'm looking through my notes so give me bear, bear with me a second uh, can yeah. I can we uh, maybe uh, I mean the tablet I, I can't quite remember how we were introduced to it was it um... it might help if, if you guys if you're in your notes if you see anything that says what language the tablet was in Because was it? Dang it! I'm not finding mm -hmm. anything. No, neither. Do you guys remember what language it was in? Because I, I thought we needed it to be translated. Um, 
while you guys figure that out, I got to step away for just a minute, okay? Okay. Right. We lost Kyle. We lost Kyle oh. again. Okay. Wasn't it an right, Atlantean? Here's... I mean, I'm not consulting notes. I'm just... Uh... Oh Listen, yeah, I'm just I'm there, looking Lance at with? I can't find anything in my notes. What I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying not to tell her what exactly what we're looking for, but I want to give her enough that she could guide us. <clears throat> to which area so, or behind the scenes. I, I would imagine this thing's probably not on display or were we told that it's on display? I'm guessing it's not on display. I think I think that's part of the funnel that we're part of the thing is we're going to end up having to break in. That's why I was asking her about how many right. people work in there. To um, figure out what, what we might be up against if we have to go into there. Do you, I, I can't recall that last session where we were introduced to this thing. Who told us about the tablet? Was it um, when we dropped off the, the was it the sword? Or was, it, was it a sword or was it like a shield? I forget. It was the shield, I think. Yeah, didn't we give that up? Or do we still have that thing? No, we gave it up. Okay. The British intelligence has it in England. That's right. Okay. And they're the ones that told us that, I don't know how we got the knowledge of the tablet. I guess that's where I'm. Yeah. See, I'm, I, I, I just, it's been so long since we played. I can't remember. Yeah. I'm going to ask if we can do a, um, I can do an occult check on it. Um, I probably should have done it back when we were talking about the tablet last session, but maybe I'll, we can do that and get some information at least to kick this yeah. out. Just just enough for her to, to give us a clue, but I know Marty's gone and we shouldn't be metagaming, but you know, just between us, I think that uh, <clears throat> I... I I think we're going to look and look and we're going to end up having to go into their back rooms. Yeah, I think so too. And no, and no we can't use too. demolition charges. <laughs> Only to get out <laughs> if we need to. Um, you know what, since uh, he's stepped away, I'm going to take a bio break real quick. Okay. Right back. Okay, me too. I'll do the same.
turned. Damn, my game notes are all mixed in with my consulting notes. I'm I have quite ex notes. quite extensive game notes, but I haven't uh, like my, the last like six sessions. I haven't gone through and like cleaned them up. Or are you looking for something I'm in just, particular? I'm just looking for a hint to how old these artifacts might be. I'm so sorry, so guys. It's all right. So we could guide the... Well, it's Atlantean. Most of the stuff is Atlantean. Which means it would be prehistoric. Prehistory. I'm back. Right? Yeah. Because... Uh, and probably not marked as Atlantean, right? Because that's... Uh, right. It would be... It would be ancient. Maybe we... Maybe we just ask for, you know, we're, maybe we just ask her, that, tell her that we're very interested in ancient pre-Egyptian, any ancient pre-Egyptian pieces. Sounds like a plan. Put the moves on her, man. <laughs> she told you about her large staff. You uh, tell her about yours. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I've got plenty of calculations on separative work units to uh, enrich uranium, but that's not pretty much the game. <laughs> um, not yet. All right, that's it. I, I, there's no. We just know it's Atlantean, so that would be pre, pre. Yeah. That would be pre-Egyptian history. Yep, pre-history. Okay. All right. So are we all back? Yeah, I'm back. All right, Henry. Uh, Henry looks at this uh, dazzling smile <laughs> and says, "Well, we." are especially interested in any pieces that might be uh, pre-Egyptian history. Probably some of your oldest pieces. We'd like to kind of start at the beginning. She, uh, she uh, kind of turns her head slightly, gets a little bit of a puzzled look, and says prehistory that's a, an interesting request most people come to the Egyptian museum to view Egyptian historical artifacts <laughs> well and, and we would very much like to do that but I'd like some I'd like to understand some context to the timeline you know like I said kind of start at the beginning um, all right make a uh... I guess let's make a persuasion roll. Um, call it will persuasion. Um, charm if you have it. Well, let me take a look at what I got. No, I have to see if... Yeah, you're not, not really lying to her, so... Um, oh, well. Will persuasion, eh? Yep. Boy, I should really be talking to her. Yeah. I didn't well, realize, I didn't realize I had such a high persuasion. Uh, no focus, but will ten and persuasion three. That's. Uh, I don't even remember how I got that. Oh wow. Wow. Okay. Um. She says, uh, "I am, I am extremely knowledgeable." Uh, about most of the artifacts in the museum, but what you're looking for is, uh, what you're asking for is nothing that we really have on display. Um, however, I think, uh, 
I think Monsieur Lucien, Monsieur, Lu, ah, God, Monsieur Lucien, Monsieur. thank you, Lucien, would be much more able to help you. Uh, if you if you wait, I can uh, see if I can track him down. I think that would be outstanding. I'm sure that our uh, the very learned uh, members of my party would. Uh, very much like to have a discussion with Monsieur Lucien. Uh, she um, she smiles and says, "Then uh, wait here. I shall return in a few minutes." Um. So she uh, heads out from behind the reception desk and goes towards the back of the museum, and uh, disappears through a through a door, uh, leaving. You all standing there amidst this wide hallway, this uh, this grand hall. But uh, we saw which door she went through. You did. All right. Had right, had multiple signs on it, or it has a sign with a scrawl in multiple languages, I should say, uh, which amounts to uh, uh, museum staff only. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> you want to should run some recon while you're talking to uh, this Lucian feller? It doesn't hurt to uh, it, it doesn't hurt to mosey around and yeah, do some eyeballing. Uh, look at some of the statues. Look at some of the doors. Look at some of the stairwells. Get a general layout of the place. Roger that. Uh, I will try and help you in a moment, but since I started this discussion, uh, I have to stay until I can turn it over to uh, Walter and Khan. They're the big brains in the group anyway. They should be talking to this guy. I imagine he's, if he's ahead of a museum, he's got to be one of these PhD egg, egghead types. <laughs> Well, I think Slim is going to try to case the joint. All right. Uh, just kind of like walk around the museum and, I don't know, uh, make a tactical assessment. Using his criminal criminal uh, background? Oh, yeah, like invoking the uh, the truth? Criminal well, I don't mindset. know. But, um, yeah, I think I have that one, too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> my sheep birds of a feather yeah my yeah um well henry's archetype a type is infiltrator but his background is criminal so yeah criminal mastermind is his truth Ooh, you got me one up <laughs> still the two of us uh should be able to case a joint definitely and they're done that <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, okay. in, invoking that truth, Slim, um, I'm yep. gonna I'm gonna sidestep an observation rule. Um, you know, looking around. Uh, I, now, of course, this place is extremely impressive. Like, uh, you know, like many of the many of the quote unquote old world buildings that you saw in Europe between Rome and Vienna, uh, and of course, uh, a little bit of time spent a very small amount of time spent in London. You know, I, I would think to an American, the just the sheer age and size of this place is is impressive, to be sure. Um, what is not impressive at all is the security. Um, there's certainly a few employees around. Uh, I, I, obviously, there you know there's some staff, some museum staff uh, that mill around, uh, answering people's questions, talking about different pieces, um, but there's not not very many of them additionally from the standpoint of actual security features of the building itself they're like next to none um mm. a, a it looks like very few of the doors even the doors that are marked for staff only actually lock uh the um you know the the windows are not extremely secure uh, someone could probably very easily uh, now some of them are just big glass windows that don't open or close but many of the others just uh, you know their the entrance through uh, through them would not be difficult at all 
Um, obviously, this place doesn't expect to be the victim of crime. <laughs> so. Yeah, I see. All right. It will be very soon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Trouble just walked in through the door. <laughs> the, uh, All right. The uh, dark-haired woman returns with a with a medium height, skinny frame man wearing a uh, wearing a tweed suit and a bow tie, uh, long, somewhat unkempt hair that's thinning on top. Probably your guess would be he's probably in his late forties, and uh, uh, wearing thick. Uh, uh, steel rim glasses he he uh, comes in and uh, he uh, he sees the well I guess three of you because Slim is off doing his thing looking around and he says um, he as he approaches he hands his he, he extends his hand out uh, in a friendly greeting and says uh Welcome to my museum. I am. He also has a French accent. My name is uh, Lucien Cutier. Ooh, <laughs> I'm just gonna write down Lucien. <laughs> I think um, <clears throat> um, Pilecki's gonna kind of step forward and uh, you know hold out his hand and introduce himself as. Uh, well, let's see here. It's been a while. Um, I'm going to introduce myself as a visiting professor, I'll just say Pilecki from University of, and I I can't remember where my contact is from. Is it Vienna? Yes. It is, right. So the university, that's, I don't know if it was the University of Vienna, but I'll use that as the ruse. And um, just cut to the chase and say that, uh, you know, we are, we're very interested in um, looking to see what you have in. Nubian, pre-Nubian, and I'm I'm pulling this out of my ass right now. I, my my ancient Egyptian archaeology is terrible, but uh, um, prehistoric um, anything that you might lend us to the the prehistory of the area, especially uh, writing techniques, etc. And um, I'm hoping I can do a persuasion roll here. Yeah. Uh, for him. Yeah, so. I'll let you do a I'll let you do a persuasion roll. It'll be will persuasion. Um, deceive focus if you have it. Yeah, no focus, unfortunately. Well, Can I assist? Because I do have a deceive focus. Oh, shit, I should have probably had you do this then. I forgot about that. It's okay. But I think this will be okay. It's a 10 and a 3, so I think... Uh, but yeah, go ahead and assist. So I forgot how we do it. Do uh, the, whoever one? assists just rolls one die. All right. 1d20? Correct. Well, Pilecki succeeded. Um, how does that, Con? How does that compare to your target number? What's your will and persuasion combined? So my will, well, my will is nine. My persuasion is three. So that's uh, twelve plus a deceive. Okay. Yeah. So a roll of fifteen is a failure, but but Pilecki's got a success. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Lucian shakes your hand and says, "Well, I, you know." Uh, uh, visiting visiting professors are always welcome, especially from close to home. Uh, he says, so what you're, what you're looking for um, is, is a wide range. Uh, the, the, uh, the bowels of this building are full of artifacts from not only all over Egypt, but areas south and even Persia, and uh, there, there's and, and even some, even some Greek artifacts, because obviously the Greeks uh, 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 controlled Egypt for some time. Um, so there, there's there's quite a there's quite a bit to be found, uh, and I'm not quite sure where to direct you. Um, I'll just interrupt and I'll, I'll tell them that we are we are conducting a, a, a university funded survey to look at the the uh, prehistoric contents of museums and in, in this area and uh, and also um, in uh, northern Africa. 
at large. Well, uh, I'll tell you what I what I what I can uh, what I can provide for you as a as a professional courtesy uh, visiting professor. Uh, we have, uh, a, in fact, if if you will follow me, and uh, he uh, he turns and starts to head towards um, uh, towards the uh, towards the door that he had entered from. Is he is he gesturing for all of us or? Just, oh yeah, um, yeah. He just said okay. if, if 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 maybe he said if you and your entourage will follow me. Oh, that'd be very kind. Thank Ooh. you. Entourage. So uh, the the door opens into a hallway uh, to which he leads you to the left and to a set of stairs that go down about eight steps and then further down from there. Um, you find yourselves in a large basement. Uh, everything is, uh, the, 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 the walls are actually made of, of blocked quarried stone. Um, and the uh, floor is also made out of stone. As close as you are to the Nile, that's, uh, it's an interesting feat of engineering because uh, from the temperature drop, you're sure you're down, you're, you know, you're obviously below ground. Um, and what you have here is a long hallway that heads east away from the river, you know, underneath the city. And it's, it, it goes, uh, it goes as far as the eye can see and everything is electric lit down here, but there's just attached to this hallway is room after room after room. And he, uh, he takes you over to a, a large uh, card catalog. And he, uh, he kind of taps the top of it as he stands next to it, and a huge plume of dust blows up everywhere. <laughs> and he says, this uh, we inherited. It, um, the, uh, it comes from... Oh, I'm not exactly certain. I believe this catalog predates the Great War. It was maintained up until about 1922. This is a big part of my research project, going through everything the museum has and trying to uh, determine exactly what artifacts we have. Perhaps this could be of help, uh, depending on exactly what you're researching. It's set up just like uh, the, the standard systems you find in most... Uh, university libraries and whatnot uh mm -hmm. you're you're welcome to you're welcome to uh use this to further your research uh most of the artifacts if they're not on display upstairs are probably packed away i would ask you not to open anything without asking first uh and certainly don't remove anything uh from any of its rooms of course of course uh the knowledge contained in this catalog is exactly what we were looking for. You're very kind to extend this courtesy to us. He says, uh, in that case, I do have, uh, I do have some matters I need to attend to upstairs. Uh, if, uh, if you need any additional help, uh, uh, Micheline at the front desk uh, could probably provide you some assistance or at least track me down. Very well. Thank you so much, sir. You're most welcome, Professor, and uh, we will. I will uh, speak with you soon. And he heads back up the stairs. Oh, we're in, boys. Nicely done. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> Where's uh, the uh, statue pointing now? Uh, give me one sec. Um, the statue is uh, currently, uh, the statue points uh, to the southwest, which would be across the Nile. And does it point towards a wall or down a corridor? Oh, no, it points, like, to the wall behind you. To the wall behind you, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because so we move closer to the Nile <clears throat> by one full block on the map, one block. It's many city blocks. Oh, did we so, go west? Pointing... I'm sorry? Did we go west or east? When we came you went here? southwest. The British... We went southwest along the road, and east. now it's pointing okay. southwest, which is 
straight across the Nile. Yeah, the, the, the Egyptian museum, uh, the grounds of the Egyptian museum basically butt up against the Nile. Right. Yeah. And, and, but In fact, when I'm looking at the, oh yeah, I'm looking at the museum. The, right. When on our map, the Egyptian. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I was just wondering uh, which direction we headed when we were led downstairs to the cavern. Um, it, I it, we headed east. The, you know? the basement heads off to the east. East, and seems okay. to extend past the uh, past the actual grounds of the museum itself. I see. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry about that, Mike. Nothing. I just I just realized I found the Egyptian museum on the map, and it's he's, it's just like he said, it's butting up against the Nile. <clears throat> okay. Um. So I suggest that uh, I suggest that uh, you and Singh route through this card catalog uh what i'm not sure what language the cards are in uh if it predates him so you might need sings uh might need some skills there and uh slim and i i think are going to uh see what else is down here in the basement usually museums do their restorative work and keep their extra pieces in the basement where else would you what do you think sounds good to me okay so slim and i'll i think we'll stay together and start moseying around you guys uh, see what you can you can find basically we're looking for i think we know we're looking for a a tablet that is probably Atlantean, although I'm sure there isn't a red card in there that says, hey, Atlantean artifact here. So <laughs> good luck with your research. So I guess you'll probably have to go get me because I'm like running around casing the place. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, when he so reconnects, you know, he'll he'll fill you in. Um, and gleefully uh, follow you into whatever unrestricted or whatever restricted area we can get our hands on. Yeah, we were kind of given permission to be in the basement, so uh, we shouldn't arouse too much suspicion, except that, you know, it, I don't want to put this. If we're running around in the upper reaches of the museum while our guys are in the basement, it like look, might look weird. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to mosey back down and and uh, start looking around in the basement, to see what we can find. Because if the pre Nubian stuff isn't on display, it's uh, it's probably someplace in the basement. So they'll look at the card catalog. We'll look. At, we'll start looking at stuff. Does that make sense, uh, Hachiman? Yep, yep, yep. Um, so right. let me get um, from the people going through the card catalog. Um, I'm looking for a Reason Academia test. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Would a cultism focus help me identify if there's something fishy on the card? No, I don't think so. In this case, I think you'd be looking at a basic history focus. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the basic history, uh, but I do have a 10 and a 2. Sharif, what do you got? You're muted, buddy. Yeah, I'm looking here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We're looking at focuses for academia. It's linguistics and occultism. Yeah. What's your reason? Linguistics score? might help. My reason is eight. Yeah. Okay. My rank so, of academia is three. Okay. So yeah. it it sounds like you would want Palecki to make the two dice roll and then Khan make the backup roll, the the single die help roll. You got any momentum? Um, you do. You guys have three have momentum. Two. Three. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, didn't Luca earn one also? When she yeah, was sniffing around? yeah, that's why you have three. Yep. Uh, should we take one for an extra die? We kind of need for to it. make this roll. Yep. Okay, let's do that. Go for it. Yeah. All right. All right. So three dice. Yep. 
and Khan rolls a single die. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and you said academia, right? Oh, yeah. Academia and focus and focus. Wow. Wow. We read the shit out of that card catalog. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Take that, bitch. <laughs> All right. Fine. If that's the way you guys want to play What's the it. one get us? Uh, one gets you two successes automatically. Two successes. Nothing with the momentum, though, huh? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you've got well, six momentum, so... Yeah, he got he, two successes plus Walter got two three successes, which is five, and presumably we only needed one or whatever. Yeah. So we generated momentum, yeah. So going through and uh, following one thing to another... Uh, you eventually come across this card, which matches up to some of the information that you know about the black stone. And in fact, it, there's the description of it: polished black steel, age unknown, dynasty unknown, recovered in Sace, uh, which you know the DOG recovered the black stone in Sace. And it says it was recovered by the GOG in 1905. It has three different languages on it. Hieroglyphs, hieratic, and something that's unidentified. And it tells you the location. <laughs> Look at that location. Well, yeah. you know, since Henry and Slim are the ones looking around, um, who's got the... Uh, who's got the, between Henry and Slim, uh, inside observation, who's got the better role? Well. With a sight focus, I would say. Let's see here. Looking like 12, no focus on that. <clears throat> and my inside is 9. My observation is 2. I'm 11, so you're better. All right, so Slim, um, so you guys go ahead and make that roll. Uh, Slim, you can make two dice as the main roller, and Henry will roll one as the helper. And you guys have six momentum, which is the max. Uh, um, so, well, it um, doesn't matter. It doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> Slim roll just <laughs> rolled and got two successes right out the gate. Oh, so. look at you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, Slim, this place is mind-boggling. Uh, you begin to realize that some of the rooms have further rooms, and rooms are attached to rooms, and it's just it's just a nightmare. But there's definitely a system of organization. Every doorway leading off of the main hall has a Roman numeral above it, okay? And they increase as you go down the hall. And inside the rooms... There's a multitude of shelves, and the shelves all have, uh, all have seem each shelf seems to have a uh, a letter designation. So um, it's definitely all organized. It just, uh, you know, you don't understand exactly what the organization is outside of room number and shelf number, but. As far as the stuff that's here, most of it's just crate after crate. You know, a lot of it's packed away. Um, but there, you see some stuff. You see a statue here, you know, or a, a statue or statuette, or you see a piece of pottery there, or even, you know, even maybe a, a, a bronze dagger, you know. But but most of it is crates on shelves. Yeah, and mostly we were just looking around. But we didn't know if there'd be a chance of actually seeing a tablet, which... We wouldn't know what we're looking at other than we're looking for a black tablet. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> so, but that very good insight, Slim, that you noticed that. Well done, man. Uh, so, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> since everything's in boxes, and I'm, sure, I'm assuming the crates have labels on them, too? Um, yeah, they do. Okay, well... Slim, why don't we mosey back and see if these guys uh, have some insight on where to look, because there's just too much stuff here for us to start breaking open crates, don't you think? Well, that makes sense to me. And he's, like, uh, manhandling some artifact on the shelf before, like, he uh, <laughs> like, kind of, like, loosely tosses it back on the shelf. 
<laughs> well, I didn't see any signs that say do not touch. Me neither. They're all upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what any of this is. And uh, he has no concept of preservation or like, you know, archival <laughs> anything. He's smoking, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course yeah. he is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he'll follow both the back up. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna mosey back to the guys. Um, I are they still at the catalog? Yeah, they're they're uh, Con and Pelecki are standing there looking at a uh, at a uh, dog-eared and you know a dog-eared index card. Well, we explained to him that. Everything's not everything. Most of the stuff is packed away in crates with labels, so it wouldn't look right if we just started breaking open crates to look for stuff. Have you guys found anything? We have, and uh, we know where it's at. Can you point us in the direction where these numbers may may be, since you've already looked? Let me show them to Card. So, numbers. so Slim, tell them what. Uh, Tell them what you found out. You're the big brain. Well, uh, there's all sorts of uh, fancy numerals all over the doors down here. Uh, lots of shelves. These gentlemen uh, are pretty well organized. Um, lots of little doodads and whatnot on these shelves. I imagine uh, we match these uh, letters and numbers. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> so it looks like... Uh... Roman numeral XXVI is uh, 26. We need to find room what? number 26. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah. So, all right, let's start looking for room number 26. All right. Um, a. Are they in order, or are they kind of hodgepodgey? No, they 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 advance in order down the wide hallway, so it's not hard to find room twenty six. Room twenty six is a is a large L shaped room, uh, and the um, the uh, as you as you enter immediately to the left is uh, uh, just an A planted on the wall over a series of shelves um, that go floor to ceiling. And at the very bottom, uh, and, and each shelf is labeled with a one, two, three, four, the very bottom, which isn't even a shelf at all, it's a, it's a lower level, uh, or it's a, it, not even a shelf at all, but it's just the floor level, I'm sorry, sitting right on the floor, and right next to it on the wall is, is 13. There's, uh, there are only, there's only two items here, um, and they're, they're wooden crates about three feet tall. And they have uh, they have a label on them that says uh, that has the same location number as what's on the index card, the uh, you know the Roman numeral twenty six A thirteen. Uh, and in addition, the label says J Bergdorf nineteen o five comma D O G. Okay. How big did you say this crate was? Uh, it's about three foot tall. Each one's about three feet tall and oh, uh, four tall. foot wide. And there's two of them? There's two of them. With the same label? With the same there. label, yep. Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, you, you want I should open this up? Yeah. Yeah, right, let's... Uh, uh, why don't we have... Be... We need somebody uh, watching in the hallway. Um, well, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, um, in case they start strolling to see how we're doing to intercept. So, uh, well, what would you rather have me do? You want me on eyes, or you want me to smash this thing? <laughs> Who's got the best observation? Although it should be pretty obvious if someone's yeah, coming. Yeah, just intercepting somebody coming down the hallway. That's all. Yeah, uh, I mean, well, unless they're actively trying to avoid being seen, I mean, they're going to be coming down a hallway, so it shouldn't yeah. be too hard. I don't know. Slim's a pretty good bullshitter. <laughs> I appreciate that, sir. And he, uh, well, the, yeah. how are we going to open these? 
I can't. I don't know. I mean, I'm... Slim's got an entrenching tool with him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it's interesting how this stuff just. You know how big an entrenching tool is. Isn't it weird that it just magically disappears? We can walk around the city and no one sees you're carrying an entrenching tool. Oh, it's not like a foldable one or whatever. Isn't that how they? <laughs> <Even> so. <laughs> <laughs> you ones are, but you can put it behind your jacket, like in your. Yeah, you that's know. what I say. Well, okay. Well, I mean, there's got to be like a crowbar or something in these these rooms where, with his crates, right? Yeah. Well, let's just get on with it. Open this thing up. We. <laughs> or Slim, like you know, pulls like some ornamental weapon off a shelf. And, uh, <laughs> Starts oh, dragging the silver tip into the crate. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. Um. All right, well, well, I'll, I'll go keep a look out. You gentlemen can do your academics. All right, let me see what I'm carrying. Hold on a second. I've got, I've got, uh, if I look at my equipment and weapons and stuff. I think I've got a. I mean, it wouldn't be out of question for slim to be carrying that i mean the e-tools used as a melee weapon by by grunts um so i mean i don't know if it would be out of character for him to have it like stuffed in the back of his pants underneath his jacket they're not that big i mean i don't know yeah i don't have a problem with it you know, all right I mean, it, you know slim, open know. this thing i'll uh stand by the doorway and look and watch can do they found DD-224 off the coast of Northern California? They found who? DD-224. Um, it was a U.S. Navy destroyer during World War II. It's the only American ship that was captured and pressed into service by the Japanese. Oh, yeah. oh shit. And they just found it? They found the wreckage off the coast of Northern California. Oh, that's cool. And they said it's wow. almost completely intact. Wow. That's, That's amazing. Crazy. Sorry. I just, I think no. I, it came across my phone. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> That's uh, with theme for the game. <laughs> In the future. Well, you uh, tell Slim to, to handle this artifact, they're going to find uh, XXVIA on the coast of California. <laughs> okay. Right. That was a stretch, but all right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so he starts unceremoniously taking this uh this crate apart so uh, you know in the uh in the process of doing this uh you realize because you know i i would think that at times you would probably look to adjust the crate slightly as you start to pry this this thing's heavy yeah. i mean it's heavy 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 um you uh you finally start to uh get this thing pulled apart and inside are um, hold on one second. Let me. Why didn't they make this handout? That's all right. I'm gonna let a screen grab real quick. Give me one second. <coughs> okay, and then we're gonna come over to here. I, I I can't believe this isn't a handout. So I I just have to screen grab it. Give me one sec. Export to. Easier if I export it to desktop, probably. Oh my gosh, holy windows open. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> Just tons of windows open. You don't realize how much shit you have open as a given at any given moment. Alright, uploading, uploading. There you go. Oh. <clears throat> so the crates have these in them. Huge stone tablet not sure what kind of stone it is but they have this this spiral symbol on them and they're they're covered in writing the writing like crosses through the spiral um a, a yeah looks like a bunch of rocks <laughs> <laughs> but like he walks over to the walks over to the slabs a little bit closer kneels down and Starts tracing his finger through the spiral. Uh, could I do a? Uh, I do have the occult focus now, so um, can I do an observation? Not an observation. A. There we go. 
doing here? An academia role? Academia, occultism, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, you can do reason, reason, academia. Okay. See does someone know. does Khan have a languages talent? One of you guys have a languages talent of some kind? I think Pilecki does, right? Um, languages? I do. I also have a focus yeah, yeah. in linguistic. Okay. I All have right. the polyglot thing. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Pilecki, uh, two successes? I see one. Oh, one, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing specific. Nothing, okay. Um. Khan, what languages do you speak? Um, Khan speaks, uh, English, Punjabi, Atlantean, Latin, and Arabic. Jesus. Um, which <laughs> I read if Polyglot gives him anything. It says here... When faced with a language you don't know, you may spend one momentum in order to understand the overall meaning of the text or conversation. Okay. All right. So just right off the cuff, um, <clears throat> go ahead and make a, um, Con, go ahead and make a reason academia role with linguistics focus if you have it. I do. Let me make that. You guys have six momentum, by the way. Yeah, you could use the momentum to get another die, even. Yeah, do that. Well, keep in mind that if I use the momentum, I can already get the gist of it. Just because of polyglot. Oh. Well, well I okay. think they were saying use the extra die just to avoid risk failing the roll, but... But I guess what I'm saying is, is it better to spend... <laughs> is it better to spend momentum to translate it? Or should I just spend the momentum to get the gist? No, of it? I mean you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Because for well, one momentum, you can't, I'm spending one yeah, you, momentum. You can't get a complication if you um, <laughs> don't roll. Just spend the momentum, right? <laughs> yeah, I also can't get bonus momentum. <laughs> well, you're at yeah, max. We have, we're already max, so yeah. just okay. do it. Use so the you know what? Yeah, yeah, use I'm the momentum on the academia roll and see what happens. Yeah, okay. Do that. Oh, okay. Watch him get a complication. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, man. Whoa. Holy mackerel. Look at the big hey, period. I've understood it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So the um, you recognize one language right off the cuff. Uh, and I mean, just immediately because you speak it and it's Atlantean. Uh the other two languages, even though you don't know them directly, uh, you do recognize them just because of your, you know, your your level of learning in languages. Uh, it's definitely hieratic and hieroglyphs. So the, uh, you know, matching the card to the stone, the, the language that was unidentified is obviously Atlantean. Um, it speaks of... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. It, it speaks of the ancient race of Atun that came to Egypt at the dawn of civilization and brought with them the great sun. Uh, and the uh, brought with them the great sun, the treasure of Amarna. And that's basically what it says. And the the cuff of uh, and then the based on the rule, the other languages, even though you don't speak them, you recognize enough similarities with hieroglyphics uh, that you that you're sure that it's telling the same story in three different languages. Does it explain what the design is? Um, it just calls it the Great Sun. I will relay all this information. Okay. Sun as in the sun in the sky, but at the same time, it's also, it seems to be used as a proper name as well. Well, that didn't tell us a whole lot. <laughs> well, I mean, can you make an occult roll off of his yeah, language roll? You know what I mean? Because you couldn't understand the language, right? It's not right, a right. story. Uh, can I do that to see if I have info about... Anara, you said? Uh, 
Um. Uh, uh, who are the Atun? Maybe for Atun. All of them. Well, I'm gonna remote view this thing too here shortly. So, um, but um, not remote view, but uh, yeah, remote view to give it a, get an idea of where it's been. Um, um. Yeah, I'll make you. I'll let you make a roll for. Okay. So reason academia cut. <clears throat> scrolling through my pdf um all right well you gained the momentum back um you oh well you'd already gained the momentum back anyway off of sam's yeah. roll so it didn't matter uh man the dice are being being nice to you guys today the um, the so Odds correction is a bitch <laughs> wait till later yeah it, <laughs> at the worst time i'm sure um so the uh <laughs> the atun according to legend were the were a were a uh, a sect or cult of priests that came to Egypt and wanted to turn um wanted to turn Egypt into a monotheistic religion worshipping the sun. Um, and they even went so far as to convert uh, a uh, pharaoh named Amenophis IV, otherwise known as Akhenaten, um, uh, for a short time before he died and the cult was driven out of Egypt. Do we know what year that was? Uh, yeah, if you want to spend a point of um, a point of momentum as an information spend, yeah, I'll let you do that. Sure. I don't know. Do we need to know the year of that? <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something else instead. Um, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll do uh, the remote viewing and uh, <clears throat> use three momentum because with an object within reach, I can gain limited knowledge of its past and then spend additional momentum for more specific information if I need to. Okay. Uh, would that be all right? I know some very cursory uh, stuff about this in real life, but oh, okay. I'll, I'll let the rolls. <clears throat> let the rolls go. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's see here. I haven't done a spell in a while. Uh, go to spells. Remote viewing. Uh, now, do I... Let's see here. So, I roll for it, correct? Yeah, so... Um, okay, it's been a minute since we've done this. Yeah, there, so. is a, there is a dice for remote viewing for the spells. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, me, let me remember how this works real quick. Um, so, yeah, this is what? This is difficulty two, cost two. So yeah, you would you would roll the die next to the name of the spell. You need two successes. Um, you have six momentum if you wanted to buy any extra dice. Right. So I'm gonna spend three for. Do I spend the three momentum before or after a successful roll? Uh, get the... Oh, for the that's a momentum spend after the roll. So you don't have to spend yeah. it until you okay. know you were successful. Got it. And we have. Um... Six. We have six, right? So you guys okay with me using two, and then we'll have one momentum left after all this is done? Yeah, let's do it. Well, one okay. the uh, this is a slightly different oh. momentum spend system okay. than Conan. If you want to buy one extra die, that just costs one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just all right. Use so one. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do the one. Okay. All right. So that puts you at five. Perfect. Okay. So three dice, correct? Yep. Uh, focus apply. That's weird. It always so, applies for you so on spellcasting. Yep. Right. Difficulty two. Difficulty two. Uh, Oof, the you, dice are nice. Yep. 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 So um, yeah. So your your remote viewing is successful. You want to spend the three momentum to gain limited three. knowledge of its past. Correct. Okay. And then additional momentum spend can be used to ask questions about it. Um, so most of the, 
most of the history of this um, seems to be dark. <laughs> okay, like like literally dark. Like you see nothing. Right, um, sitting in a crate. <laughs> right, but there and there <clears throat> there um, there were two two important um, two important events. Um, and one of them was recent. Uh, you're not sure how long ago, um, because this doesn't really tell you time, right? But there was a man, um, in his late thirties, you know, serviceably dressed, uh, uh, basic suit, nothing expensive. Um, and you recognize him from other things you've done, especially back in Vienna. Um, it looks like that at some point, Dr. Botho Ehrlichman, whose death you were investigating back in Vienna, uh, came and opened this very crate and made a rubbing of the stone. Which guy from Vienna? Dr. Botho Ehrlichman. Okay. The guy who yeah, you was... came to investigate. Well, you were you were set on the path of investigating his murder. Yeah, and he uh, was killed up on the mountain, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the most reason. That that's that's one thing, um, and the uh, there's there's some fast rewinding, shall we say. Uh, where you see where it was unearthed and 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 dug up uh, uh, by the German DOG team, but it looks like from what you can tell, the stone itself was crafted or carved about two thousand years ago um, by a man that had a tattoo on his wrist matching what's on the stone with the spiral. Wow, and okay. Um, you have two momentum if you want to ask any additional questions. Uh, I, th I guess the one, I think I'll just spend one momentum and ask if these were displayed um, for a period of time and in what context were they? Uh, were they the, the the object of religious attention? Were they decorative? Were they um, were people or or they, entities coming in and out to view them? It actually it looks like once the the man carved them, he had them buried. Huh. Does I mean without without automatically spending another momentum like if while he had him buried did it look like there was a ritual going on while he was doing that no he just carved him and threw and then and then cover. then had some laborers burying him yep huh Weird. well that's about as fun as the new york times crossword <laughs> <laughs> so um Walter, would you mind rolling damage dice, please? Oh, of course. And dun, 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 it, dun. it's cost two, and you spent three momentum on momentum spend, so you oh, have to roll dun. five damage dice. Okay. Uh, where do I do this? This is going to hurt. Um, at the top right corner of the character sheet, there's a button ah, that says damage dice. Five. Yep. Okay. And you said how many? Five. Oh, okay. Five. I thought you said 12. Oh, no, no, five. <laughs> oh, 12, yeah, your brain melts. You're done. Yeah. It's over. So, five dice? Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, you only took Ooh. two damage, but there were two effects. Yeah. So, um, so uh, this has piercing and draining. So, you have, um, you have one courage... So it, it blew right through your courage, so that didn't matter. So mark off two points of stress. Okay. But on top of that, up your fatigue to two. Uh, fatigue is... 
is there is. Yeah. Okay. Any injuries though? No. Uh, no, no. You got to take five damage in a shot for that to happen. I, I so. see. Okay. Um, so with fatigue two, your complication range on anything mental instead of being just a twenty is now an eighteen through twenty until you get that uh, until you get a full night of rest. Uh, wow. Okay. So yeah, Pilecki, you know, takes his hands off of the, the the tablets and sits down on his butt, kind of like you know, you know just plops down and cradles his uh, face in his uh, hands and relates the information that he saw to the group uh, in kind of just a slow, halting manner, um, trying to push through the pain. All right. Uh, <clears throat> hmm, I think Slim looks to, uh, uh, looks to the inspector. Um, and, and he says, uh, well, uh, what do you think? What do you think that uh, that professor in in uh, Vienna wanted with the rug? It's hard to say. <clears throat> perhaps he uh, perhaps he did not fully understand the uh, the providence or the full meaning of these tablets. Certainly we don't. <laughs> Seeing probably his uh, acuity, mental acuity, is good enough that we don't need to take a rubbing of these, or should we? Is there enough stuff on the tablets as far as words that we need to capture them on, on paper, or is this good enough, you think? I don't think we'll be able to carry him out of here, is what I'm saying. Oh, no. They weigh a ton. Everyone would know this. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably literally weigh close to a ton. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may not be that heavy, but they're heavy. <clears throat> I mean, um, anything that how... big made out of stone is not, is not uh, light. Well, it, it's up to you. It, it's your decision if you think you can remember what was on it. I recall, that's, you know, that's good enough for me. Um, did, uh, did, did Slim, uh, did he demolish these crates when he opened them or can we kind of, can we kind of put the crates back together and put the tops back on? No, I mean, he, his exact verbiage was taking them apart. So I, I don't think uh, putting them back together would be too much of a problem. <laughs> Cer certainly in such a way that it would pass cursory, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a cursory uh, glance. I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if we ever have to come back here, we don't want uh, Senor Lucien. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, Senor Lu Lucien. Uh, Senor. Monsieur. 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 Yeah. Monsieur. The French so, guy. <laughs> yeah. Monsieur, Monsieur Lucien, we don't want him to uh, think we, well, did what we did, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> he overstepped his hospitality a bit, don't you think, gentlemen? Um, oh, he didn't say we couldn't do this. Oh, yeah, he did, actually. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he said, please don't open up any... Uh... Oh, okay. But, eh, whatever. <laughs> Moving yeah, on in life. Right. So, anyway, I'd like to work with Slim to try and uh, at least put these back in some semblance of how we found them. It's fine. Okay. I think uh, Pilecki's going to wander back out to the card catalog just in case there's a, a visit. All right. Okay. Um, Smart. And I'll I'll actually I will leaf through it a little bit to see if there's any cross referencing to the to the words that we've uh, that we've read on the on the tablet or what Singh was able to translate. Um, 
I don't suspect much success, but I'll give it a try. Yeah, you can make a reason academia role using history focus. Yeah. Hopefully it won't turn into something bad. Um, it, it looks like, um, it looks like that the, uh, the museum does have a few artifacts from, uh, from that time period. Uh, there's a few things that actually mention, um, that actually mention, um, Amenophis the Fourth, and... There, it, from what you can tell, it looks like they're all marked as actually being on display upstairs in one of the in one of the uh, display halls. Oh, excellent! Um, since so they're I'll actually uh, since they're actually you know dated and belong to a particular ruler. Okay. I'll just note that down on a on a notepad to, in case you want to look at them later. But sure. I'll 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 continue to loiter by the card catalog until everybody else makes their way out of the room. Yep. All right. So, yeah, so you guys get the crate uh, put back together, no problem. Crates. Yeah, I'm assuming it was put together with nails. It's yeah. a wooden crate nailed together. So, if I have to, I'll use the handle on my knife to smack the nails in place. Try not to make, well, you're going to make noise. There's nothing else we can do for it. All right, so if we got the crates back together, we're going to mosey back to Walter and um, so guys uh, do we think it does us any good to continue here in the museum what's our next move we've got a tablet with a reference to the great song <clears throat> I don't know, Pilecki's looking forward to that couch. Yeah, he's going to have to go back to the hotel. Yeah, well, for sure. First, we probably right. should uh, check in with the curator, though, and thank them. Um, I don't know, maybe swing by those couple artifacts just to check them out and see if there's yeah. anything related to what we're looking for. Um, I think that's the proper thing. Let's keep on good terms with uh, the curator. Oh, and let's take a look at those, and then we'll go back to the hotel. Because Pilecki needs to sleep. Well, I mean, he's not injured per se, but I hear you. Um, no. All right. But, but if we want to use his services again, we don't want his brain to explode. <laughs> right. Plus, doesn't the... Uh... It, it lends me to potentially rolling more threat or something. Right? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, so I don't want to start rolling like crazy. And... So on your on your way uh, back up the steps, you actually run into Lucian, and he, he uh, looks at you guys kind of in, uh, it just a, not surprised, but a little bit of a startle. He says, oh, in fact, I was just coming to, uh, to check on you. Um, did you... Did you uh, find everything you were looking for or anything helpful? We did, we did. And I, I rattle off the, the couple of the artifacts that, uh, that we were going to be checking out this afternoon um, that are on display upstairs. He says, he says, ah, uh, the uh, uh, Akhenaten. It's a fascinating period in Egypt's history. Uh, uh, a monotheistic sun cult taking uh, over, essentially. Um, you know, uh, uh, it seems that Akhenaten was was obsessed with this idea of uh, of the great snake god he called Apophis, uh, uh, attempting to consume the sun. He even went so far as to move the capital to the uh, to yeah. uh, uh, the city of Amarna. Yeah. No, it's very interesting. I try to relate back some 
similar information to him to demonstrate my knowledge of um, nascent knowledge of this period. Sure. Um, and I also ask him, I go, is there, are there, are there things that are not on display um, from this period that, that you find interesting? Um, now that is a really interesting question. Um, he raises his eyebrows and says, uh, yes, in fact, there is. Uh, I, and I, I don't know what to make of it. I've never found anything like it. Um, but it was also found at Amarna. He says, uh, here, follow me. We'll go back downstairs. And he, uh, he starts down the steps. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh i will i will briefly pause him and uh and say you know my good sir yes i could, could we make an appointment for this um at a later date he um, says oh it'll only take a minute i know right where it's located sure if you want to do some persuading here <laughs> but what yeah, sure, but would, why do we not want him to take us? I, well, I'm in case he notices that the crates have been fucked with, I guess. I don't want to, um, I don't know. Well, how bad that, did we leave him? I thought we put him back together. And, uh, maybe I have the wrong idea. No, I, I, I de like, it's definitely, <laughs> no, it's definitely passable. Anyone who just glances at it won't notice. Someone would probably have to look pretty closely to, to, to tell. Okay, so all right. I How guess. about I'll, I'll stand by, and if he looks like he's going to notice, then I'll try to. No, look over away. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. What is this? Let's Another follow box. Him. He... What's, what's uh, Slim's talent called? Oh, oh, it's uh, oh, the distraction, the uh, center of attention. I think it is center. Of, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he says this is a uh, this is a most fascinating piece and it uh, fascinating but at once terrifying uh, and I've never seen anything quite like it before and I, we've had no luck researching it um, a, it it was marked as having also been found by the DOG in Amarna uh, and they they near as I can tell it's not it's certainly not of Egyptian, or at least it's not anything in the Egyptian pantheon that I've ever seen. He and he's talking to you about this as he's leading you, um, as he's leading you down the uh, the hallway, and um, he uh, he says, I, "I hope to find someone who might know more about this, but it's just it's such a it's so far from my list of priorities at the moment." And he reads you, he leads you into a room and then into another room. And he says, uh, he says, here it is. You're standing. You're, you're, you guys are standing in front of uh, what you believe is probably a statue, but there's a white sheet hanging over, it, like a protective white sheet. And uh, and he 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 pulls it off <laughs> and says, voila! And of course, there's dust that just goes everywhere. Um, you're standing in front of a six foot tall statue of a hooded figure um now this is not like the the statuette you have um because the statuette you have the robe is a very specific like tibetan monk robe whereas this is more just a conventional full-length robe with a hood over it um the face is completely hidden in darkness the statue has no face um and the uh lucian says and what is so curious about this is whatever was used to stain or paint the statue yellow the 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 ink is held up over over however many centuries old it is we we believe it comes from the same period um the the hood and cloak of the that the statue is wearing is yellow it's bright yellow um Pilecki is having a really hard time containing himself right now. oh man this is awesome <laughs> and <laughs> last but not least 
coming kind of out of the rear of the statue um, uh, from underneath its cloak. And he says, and this is such a fascinating thing. It's as if whatever this figure is, it's, it's not human or not even one of the Egyptian gods that we know of. There's, there's two tentacle like appendages that oh, come I'm out of the back of the, of the robe. <laughs> um, and there, and at the base of the statue that like the statue stands on a, on a, on a square stone base. And on the base is, uh, some heretic. And he says, I have, I have never heard this name ever. Um, but the, as you can see, the heretic at the bottom, it translates as Nyarlathotep, a name that I've never seen anywhere. How do you spell that? N Y A R L A T H O T E P, as any reader of uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit of Lovecraft can tell you. All right, so Pilecki calms down a little bit. Yeah, Pro, uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Pilecki, do you, can you shed any light on this? Have you ever seen anything of the sort? Uh, so let's see, Pilecki. I'm not going to try to vocalize this role play. Um, I don't know if I need to roll for this or not, but I would like to share information that might be a little bit esoteric, but I want to like show my my hand here well in that case let's know. make a let's make a roll to see how much you know um okay make a make a reason um reason academia occultism roll um how much momentum we have one uh, okay so i won't use it does that. this apply for all um you could certainly yeah which uh who's higher on the roll well, I've got a, let's see, I've got a 10, a 2 with a focus in occultism, so. What are you, uh, what are you saying? It's a reason, right? Yeah, reason, occultism. Yeah, I've got an 8, a 3, and occultism. Okay, so Pilecki's got the better roll. Um, so, yeah, okay. if Pilecki wants to roll two dice and you want to roll one, that's fine. All right, okay. Nice roll. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, roll. Um, oh, <laughs> you knew it was gonna come one of these days. Uh, Pilecki, uh, you got nothing. In fact, I gotta check your roll to make sure it said no complications. But oh, one of those dice was a nineteen. You generated a complication. Um, I'm. Can I can I use a momentum to roll one die over? Um, Is that a thing or a... momentum spins outside of combat? Uh. Negative. You can do that in Conan, but not here. What about a fortune point? Oh, you you can, or oh. I'll I'll just take the point of threat. Yeah, just let mean? them have it. Don't don't use your fortune point on this. I know, but it'd be nice to have knowledge about this thing. Oh well, there's that. That that's a statement. If you wanted to, you you could spend a fortune point, turn one of those dice into an automatic two successes. You can do that if you want, and it would avoid. You would obviously pick the nineteen, so you wouldn't get the threat. That's how totally many successes did? He, how many successes did he need? Uh, it was going to be a difficulty three, and Khan had one. Oh, so okay. this this Ouch. would make the roll. That's up to you. Yeah, okay, I'm going to spend the fortune. I'm going to spend the fortune. You need to know. Okay. It looks like Hestor, and you're saying it's Nyantor or Lartep, however you pronounce that. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, between the two of you, you guys know a fair amount of Nyarlathotep, um, uh, and you're, you're right from the standpoint that this statue doesn't actually represent what you know of Nyarlathotep. He, he is typically known as, um, he's typically known by a number of names, including the Black Pharaoh. Um, and uh, the Crawling Chaos, the God of a Thousand Forms, the Stalker Among the Stars, the Faceless God. It, his names go on and on. And he seems to pop up throughout known history now and again to stir up a whole lot of badness. 
Um, now, what this has to do with the rule of Amenophis the Fourth during uh, in 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 ancient Egypt during the 14th century BC, that you don't know. <clears throat> okay, so. Um... <laughs> But very bad, very bad. <laughs> yeah, bad dude, bad dude. Um, so I'll, I'll craft a, uh, a statement. Um, let's see. Um, how should I say this? Um, <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll take a step back from it and, you know, start looking at it very pensively. And then uh, a bit cryptically, have said and say I, well, I have I have seen this this name before um, but this figure this figure is uh, is detached from the name that I recognize although I don't know very much about it um, uh, Professor Khan Professor Singh have you uh, have you any experience with this form does uh does Singh have any experience with this? <laughs> I, well, I mean, you, you certainly recognize the name and you know uh, a bit about Nyarlathotep and, and it's, it's his, whichever you want to call it, uh, history. Um, again, the, the yellow-robed form, though, doesn't really match up to what you know about Nyarlathotep. It's, uh, 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 that would be more Hestur, King in Yellow type of thing, which is it explains Pilecki's immediate... <laughs> reaction yeah. to the statue um so this is kind of a this is kind of a um this it's is kind of a, a kind of befuddling i guess you might say yeah uh what i will emote to um the curator though is that you know th this is absolutely very interesting <clears throat> and it seems to be up up um, the area of expertise of myself and uh, a few of my colleagues in, in Vienna. Uh, with your permission, um, I would like to uh, sketch this object and uh, post, a, uh, post a letter to some of my colleagues in, in Vienna to see if maybe we can aid in your research. He says that would be that would be absolutely wonderful. I would I would love any help you can provide where that's concerned. The uh, the because this this statue we we've obviously kept it down here and have not put it in with the other artifacts of Amenophis's reign because it, it doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't match anything we know of the period or any of the other artifacts. So it is uh, it, it is most bizarre. Any any insight that you and your uh, your uh, uh, colleagues back in Vienna could provide would be most would be most helpful. Oh, wonderful! Then, so would it be uh, would it be appropriate for us to return um, when the museum reopens tomorrow to to conduct this drawing and maybe a closer examination so that we can provide a description to my colleagues? He said, "I I would certainly look forward to it." Oh, very well. The whole idea here. Uh, out of game. I'm trying to. I want to remote view this thing. Uh, it's history, but I don't think I can do it right now without risking some bad stuff. So maybe if we. That's my motivation anyway. So you guys know what's happening. That's a good yeah, idea. As soon as you said when you're playing back tomorrow, so I knew you wanted to yeah. take a swing at it tomorrow. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm chopping it to bit here. <laughs> you have a mushy brain. It'll probably explode my brain, but I'm chopping it to bit. Um, I do. I do ask him. I go. Have you taken any samples of um, of the uh, the pigment used to to color the statue? Uh, I haven't. I've sent them. I've I've sent it off to some experts, and I I have been waiting for a reply for several weeks now. Okay. And the material that it is crafted from? Do we know what type of stone? It or? it seems to be basic sandstone. And the provenance? Do you have the original description from where it was excavated? Uh, it was excavated by the uh, DOG in 1907. Uh, in that location? Yeah, at Amarna. At Amarna. At Amarna. I, I've, I've reached out to... Um, oh, oh, I, 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 I have her name somewhere in my office. Uh, 
uh, I've reached out to a, a German archaeologist. Uh, of course, the DOG doesn't exist anymore, but <clears throat> I, I believe that uh, uh, every uh, everything that was the DOG has been folded into uh, uh, into a university there under. Uh, of which she's the department head. I'm sorry, I don't recall her name. It's somewhere up in my office, but that's who I've reached out to for additional help. Oh, wonderful. Perhaps uh, tomorrow I can I can get her name and include her into correspondence. He said that that would be excellent. So uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow morning then, gentlemen. Beautiful. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for your hospitality. He says, oh, Wolf. Wolf, Mina Wolf, that is her name. I just remembered. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <Good. laughs> Here we go. Um, All right, so Plecky now, he is exhausted. He will shut his trap and let you guys wrap this up. All right. All right. Well, um, gentlemen, looking at the time. Yeah, I think that's probably a perfect stopping point because it 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 ends our scene before you guys choose to do anything else. Because I think the next move is everyone uh, shakes hands, thanks each other, and then you guys head back to the hotel for Palucky to get some rest. Correct. Good to me. Okay. Yeah, so, so that that makes that makes this a perfect stopping point, frankly. Wonderful. Um, okay. I I don't. Uh, so next week is the 10th um i have a con that starts the 11th that's nightmare weekend but i'm actually i'm still i took i took a week vacation i had a week i had to use or lose from work um so i'm off the 10th i don't see any reason we couldn't play in the morning normal time um because i don't have to do any prep work for the con i don't load in the day before i load in the morning of because my wife and i have it down to like an hour and a half science are set up so nice um, yeah i'm open for the 10th um looks like that's good all right so, yeah, you too all right good so let's too. plan on that um Beautiful. thanks for coming out guys yeah it was fun yeah thanks thank you great game yeah thanks. it's I'll good to be back my issues today really good to be back yeah it's good to be back <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, nothing like, uh, nothing like unveiling some Lovecraftian statues going, we have no idea where this came from. <laughs> I'm sure it has no impact on this game whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yellow, what's that? I, I'm, and you know, that I, there's, I'm not sure what the actual pronunciation of that character's name is. Um, because it's, there is somebody online I've listened to, Niantor Lartep, I think it's Niantor Lartep, Niantor Lartep. I, I've, I've heard it. I always pronounced it Nyarlathotep. That was, no, yeah, me too. I've always heard it, but I don't know if that's really. Well, and, like and Nyarlathotep is basically the same pronunciation, but the accents moved, you know, the, the, yeah. the prominence on what syllable has changed. Um, uh, and it also seems to vary on where you're from, um, because, uh, uh, the, the British pronounce it differently too. So just don't mispronounce it in front of him. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm <laughs> I, trying to summon it. <laughs> I, I'm afraid the, uh, the, the man, the only man who really knew how it's pronounced, uh, passed away at a young age. So, mm -hmm. but all right, cool guys. Um, we'll see you in a week.